Welcome back to the virtual classroom of Kembe School of Chemistry. In this uh, uh, unit, first of all, let's see the definition of these basic terms elements, compounds, atoms, molecules, and ions. Now, elements are substances which cannot split into simpler substances, which means, for example, you, you see the periodic table of elements, take sodium out of it. Uh, sodium you cannot split and get hydrogen out of sodium. So the elements are the simplest form. You cannot split the element or break the element and take another element out of it. Right? So so compounds are pure substances which can be split into simpler substances. Now we know compounds uh, are formed when atoms of different kinds combine together via uh, covalent bond, right? So compounds like, for example, sodium chloride can be split into simpler substances to obtain sodium and chlorine. So compounds can be broken down into simpler substances, unlike the elements. As for the atoms, the atoms are the smallest electrically neutral particle. You know, like the structure of the atom, atom is mostly empty space and it has a solid core at the center which is known as the nucleus. In that nucleus you got the protons and neutrons. Now protons are uh, positively charged and in between the protons you get the neutrons in the nucleus and around the nucleus you have electrons orbiting in specific path. These paths, the energy paths in which the electron orbits, is referred to as orbitals or shells. So this is the orbital or shell that is simply a path in which the electrons orbit. right? And these orbitals are known as shells, energy levels, quantum shells, orbitals, different names given. So you can notice here the protons and uh, the neutrons are concentrated inside the nucleus whereas the uh, electrons are scattered around the nucleus. The reason why the electrons are much far away from the nucleus is that they have the same charge, negative charge. So they are much far apart. And have you ever wondered how come these positively charged protons be together inside the nucleus. Now this is because the, of the neutrons. The neutrons are neutral. So job of the neutrons is to hold the protons together in the solid core. So if not for the neutrons, what happens, these protons will not be able to stand next to each other like this. It will scatter like the electron. So job of the uh, neutrons is to hold the protons together, right? Hold the protons together. So these protons, neutrons and electrons, they are all referred to as subatomic particles. If you analyze their properties, electrons, it has a really negative charge, minus one. Protons, any positive. Neutrons have no charge. As for the masses, the protons and neutrons share the same mass. It is one relative atomic mass. As for the, uh, the electrons, electrons have a negligible mass. It is about thousand, 1 upon 1840 relative atomic mass, right? So there's a question, how do the neutrons hold the protons together? For example, if I have two positive charges and I, I, I want to keep the positive charges next to each other, what should I do? I should have a barrier in between. If I have a barrier in between, I can keep the two positive charges together, right? Because there won't be repulsion because of the barrier. So this is what and this is how exactly the neutrons work. The neutrons act as a barrier and stands in between the protons. Exactly, Abdullah? So the electrons circulate around the nucleus and you notice something. The protons and the electrons are equal. If atom has four protons, right, uh, then it will have four electrons. 
four protons will have four electrons, right? So that's the reason why we define atom as a substance which is electrically neutral. There is no charge for the atom, unlike the ions. So atom is the smallest electrically neutral particle of an element which can which cannot exist on its own. Because atoms cannot exist on its own because it doesn't have a completely filled outermost shell of electrons. But some atoms, you know, the noble gases, the inert gases, they can exist on its own because they have a completely filled outermost shell of electrons. So whenever element has a completely filled outermost shell of electrons, such atom can exist on its own without taking part in any chemical reactions. Clear? If not, the elements will take part in chemical reactions and therefore it will lose or gain electrons as a result. Clear? Yeah. So, atom, electrically neutral. So, combination of atoms gives molecules. There's a difference between molecule and compound. Uh, it's a common misunderstanding that uh, some students think that the elements are different. Elements combine as a compound and the same element combines a molecule. That's not the case always. This classification of a substance as a molecule or compound is mainly done uh, in ba uh, mainly based on the type of bonding, which I'll be explaining in detail on the chemical bonding. So usually the ionic comp ionic substances we call it as compound because you know we don't say ionic molecule, we say ionic compound. And covalent substances uh, is taken as the uh, molecules, right? And as for the ions, ion is formed as a result of losing or gaining electrons. When atom, now for example, this atom, which is uh, beryllium, three protons, right, three electrons. If I remove one electron, say I remove this electron. This whole atom becomes ion and that will be a unipositive ion. It will have a plus one charge because there will be four protons and three electrons. Plus four and minus three is plus one. So if you remove one electron, the one of the positive charges become more prominent in the atom. That gives a positive ion, meaning a cation. If I remove two electrons, it becomes a di-positive. Three electrons, tri-positive. Likewise, so when you add the electrons, the opposite happens. We add extra electron then there is no proton to neutralize that extra electron. So in that situation, the whole atom becomes an anion, which is negatively charged. You add one electron, you need negative. Two electrons, die negative. Three electrons, try negative. Likewise. Clear? So atom is mostly empty space. It has a solid core known as a nucleus in the center, which consists of protons and neutrons. The electrons circulate around the nucleus In specific orbitals or shells. Uh, yes, Atif. Because uh, this is your grade eight chemistry, so that's the reason I was just explaining quickly. Because there's nothing much to learn here. But if you want still for me to slow down, you have the control. You can control my speed. Don't worry. I have to cater to what you need. So you tell me if I'm too fast, too slow, I can change. And also, when I explain some concept, right, if you don't understand, please be open. Please don't think by questioning me, you are disturbing the class. I'm breaking. Okay. What I'll do is I will log out in a while and I'll log in again. I try to bring my router close to me. This is uh, the structure of the atom. You can please copy this and label the uh, diagram. You can call this as orbitals, shells, or energy levels. This is electrons. Nucleus. Sorry, this is the neutrons. Nucleus is the other side. 
another one this is neutrons nucleus and protons Once you're done, please let me know. So these are atomic particles, if I am to summarize their properties. Can I continue? The protons has a unipositive positive charge and a mass of one relative atomic mass on the nucleus. And the relative atomic mass is a unit in which the mass of an atom is measured. We will be discussing in detail about that unit shortly. And as for the uh, electrons, Electron has a negligible mass, 1 upon 1840 relative atomic mass, it has a charge of minus 1. It's almost negligible mass compared to the protons, which has a 1 relative atomic mass, charge of plus 1, and neutrons, same mass as protons, and it has a 0 charge. So if you analyze, you can copy this as well, just to summarize. Let's see how uh, electrons, right, protons and neutrons behave in the presence of an electric field. You have positively charged plate and negatively charged plate. So I'm just sending protons, electrons, neutrons to this electric field. You will notice neutrons will not deflect and the electrons will deflect towards the positive plate and the protons will deflect towards the negative plate. The most important thing is the angle of deflection. You see the electrons deflect more than the protons. Why does the electrons deflect more than the protons? This is because the electrons compared to the protons has a much greater, much lesser mass. So as a result, the kinetic energy of the electrons will be much lower, right? Because when the mass is less, kinetic energy is half mv squared, the kinetic energy will be less. So the electron is traveling at lesser kinetic energy. Compared to the protons, proton has a greater mass the kinetic energy of the proton is greater. So therefore, the protons traveling at a higher kinetic energy. Right? So when the particle is having a greater kinetic energy, such particle cannot be deflected by this electric field. It's hard to deflect. It will deflect to a lesser degree compared to the one which has a lesser kinetic energy. Clear? So please copy this. I will uh, give the note next to it. Explain about the deflection. Yes, I'll explain again. The electrons is lighter compared to the protons. So in lighter meaning mass is less. So therefore the kinetic energy is half mv squared, right? When the mass is less, that will have a lesser kinetic energy. So compared to the protons, the kinetic energy of the electrons uh, is negligible. Very, very small. So therefore the electric field can easily deflect the electron, it will deflect the electron more than it deflects the protons. Because protons have a greater mass, it has a greater kinetic energy, therefore protons travel at a higher kinetic energy, therefore the charge plates cannot pull it down, the deflection will be comparatively less. Am I clear, Ayub?
Uh, please copy this uh, on the left side and keep some space to write a short note on the right side. Uh, it's not the double, it's, you can't say it's exactly double because it will be more than double because the kinetic energy of the uh, proton is uh, much, much greater than the electron. So you can't say it's exactly double. Right, so you can write the note uh, next to this diagram. The deflection of electron is greater than or greater compared to the proton. The deflection of electron is much greater compared to the proton as the kinetic energy of the electron as the kinetic energy of the electron is much less is much less compared to the proton due to its negligible mass Right. So next we'll see, uh, uh, okay, repeat again. Uh, when, I, when you say repeat, uh, I now if you analyze a uh, element, any element in the periodic table, you see two numbers, right? You know, one of the numbers is the mass number. Here are these atomic numbers. For example, sodium, you get 11, 23. So the highest number is the mass number, which is number of protons and neutrons together. Uh, because why we call this as mass number? Because the protons and neutrons are the subatomic particles which gives a mass weight to the atom. Because electrons are almost no mass compared to the mass of the protons and neutrons, almost negligible mass. So this is the uh, number of protons. That's known as the atomic number. Atomic number is number of protons. Therefore, atomic number is also referred to as the proton number. The uh, mass number is uh, the number of protons and neutrons. As you know, protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. Therefore, the mass number is also referred to as nucleon number nucleon number because protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. So there is uh, no uh, standard method to write the protons and neutrons. You can write like this. I mean the atomic number and the mass number. You can, it's not that all the atomic number is below and the mass number is above. There's nothing like that. You can even write this way. All these are accepted. Whatever the method you write, remember the highest number is the mass number and the lowest number is the atomic number. And you notice you take few elements like sodium and even uh, oxygen 
carbon. In some elements, the mass number is exactly double the atomic number. But that's not the case always. Lithium is not exactly double. 